Michael Hansmeier, who was a banker initially, and now he's an architect and he teaches and he's a researcher at uh, ETH, uh, ETH uh, in uh, Zurich, a very, uh, very an excellent architecture school. This is the man, and he does the, 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 the unthinkable. He creates a new order in architecture, meaning columns, just like the Greeks did, the, you know, the Doric, the Ionic, the Corinthian. He is doing something, but he rather inspired or related to Oriental columns and not European. And you'll see what I'm talking about because I'll show temples from India. Um, but he works with uh, parametrics, with scripting and programming. And he does, uh, uh, you know, uh, outrageous things like this. You know, again, the rationalist would have a heart attack looking at these things. How could this be? You know, after years of modernism and Adolf Loss, you know, uh, screaming against the ornament, here comes a young architect conceiving something like this. How is it possible? Well, it is possible. Uh, and uh, it means there is a need in the present for a return of the ornament, uh, whatever some people might think, but both Hans Meyer and uh, Mark Forn are, are, are pioneers, and they are not the only ones. There are others who work, uh, you know, somehow in similar similar ways. These are three D printed, of course, the woven column uh, at uh, in, in the campus uh, in Zurich at the hash. You will see soon even a happy dog near uh, this column and also one of his colleagues, uh, not of the dog, but of Hans Meyer, uh, part of the faculty in Zurich. I love them because they are explorers. They are searching for new things. They are discoverers. They discover new things. And as I said, the dog seems to be, you know, solemn because uh, the dog understands the, you know, the, the the, the significance of, uh, of, of, this, uh, of this column. Anyway, and this is a um, you know, uh, interesting uh, assistant, uh, part of the faculty of ETH. Uh, they are dreamers, and uh, it's good that they are dreamers. Now, uh, Hans Meyer says, unseen objects that await us if we as architects begin to think about designing not the object, but a process to generate objects. And by the way of this, I want to tell you that last year in Vienna at the Institute of Architecture, where Zaha Hadid taught for 20 years, invited by Wolf Prix, I saw, we saw with uh, some students from here, we visited the school, a project that was a diploma work that was very appreciated. Actually, the architect didn't do a, 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 an, architect, a, an architectural project. What he did, he invented a software with which he instructed the computer to generate itself many kinds of um, uh, alternative uh, um, buildings after he nourished the computer with um, uh, you know some uh, uh, schemes done by Le Corbusier and so he transformed um, uh, the, the machine uh, generated a multitude of proposals based on that software that the student created so the Again, just like uh, Hans Meyer, he didn't create an object. He created the premises for a process that would generate the objects. And that process was carried on by the machine, by the computer, not by the man, not by the student. And that project was very appreciated. Anyway, forget uh, his uh, too, many, too, uh, too much uh, everywhere, uh, right? Uh, we forget it with Andre Malraux, we, we, we go to more uh, of these proposals and, and, and the realizations of Hans Meyer. Yes, they build mainly in, in galleries and for galleries, but they are exploring new things. Again, who would have imagined that uh, an architect in the 21st century would design new columns, you know, and, and very ornate, ornate it. Uh, So it is clear to me that some architects at least are sick and tired of the white walls. They, they want levels of complexity. They want architectural embroideries. They want weaving. Look, look at these surfaces and volumes. And it is some, 
you know, uh, in a way, a return of the Rococo, of the Baroque. Now, yes, the pandemic maybe will, will make us reconsider certain things, but, but these are very recent works. Um, and, uh, you know, we do have the technology to, to produce such things. So the traditional notion of an architect having a vision of a building and then drawing it either on paper or on a computer and then constructing it, it isn't really how architecture works. And in reality, the computer has a lot of influence on design. I agree, the conception that we only use the computer after we make a hand-drawn sketch just to be more rigorous is not true. The computer can be used creatively. In fact, you can so-called sketch directly with a computer and use its, 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 its built-in uh, potential for creativity and not just for submiss submissively, uh, you know, transforming to so-called reality what you sketch on a napkin. No. Uh, anyway. So this one. So look at these columns and this is the, the, the creator. And there are people around them who also enjoy them and explore them. But I want to show you that, in a way, nothing is new in the world. And I will show you architecture, uh, architectures from, from Asia, from India, uh, temples. And, and, and between what uh, Hans Meyer does and what um, the builders of, of these temples did is not such a long distance. Because the quest for beauty is essentially the same one. We might have different means uh, technologically, but uh, uh, in essence, at bottom, you know, there is a continuum in the world. And there is a continuum not just in space, but also in time. Here you have in Hans Meyer and European, you know, working in, in a way not dissimilar to how the Hindu builders uh, uh, the Buddhist uh, uh, builders built, uh, you know, a long time ago uh, on a different continent. Now, of course, there are differences, for example, between Patrick Schumacher and Hans Meyer. Hans Meyer still believes somehow in a column while Schumacher eliminated the column. Both uh, uh, approaches to architecture are legitimate and correct. And they are very different and it's okay. We should uh, welcome differences. Here you also have sculptures which adds to the richness of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the architecture and of the, the whole experience something we should reconsider perhaps, inviting back the sculptors to uh, our proximity and working together with them. We need the artists, we need to associate ourselves with them. Uh, for too many years we were divorced and it's not a good thing. Here you see clearly the builder, the architect, the craftsman, the artist, they are all together working for the the entity called the temple or the building, and that's what Walter Gropius wanted too, the unity of all arts for building the building of the future. Well, we are still not building it because we are still separated. So there are incredible riches in the world, both past and present, and of course, future. Because the human imagination is, uh, is uh, essentially without limits. Yes, we are sometimes dwarfed by all kinds of problems, some of them uh, man-made, but I do trust in the human imagination. And I, I believe uh, Einstein was right when he said, imagination is more important than knowledge, if by knowledge we mean uh, accumulation of uh, data. It's also the relationship between architecture and jewels, in a way, you know. Uh, uh, again, the ornament is coming back with great force. 
and it insinuates itself into architecture uh, persuasively, I think. This was a project for, uh, it, it, it didn't actually happen, uh, some kind of a stage design, the digital grotesque, a 3D printed room, he wanted to, to, to make it, but it was not built, or it was, no, no, this is not part of it. Back to his columns, and uh, references to, because, you know, he is connected with a certain history of art and architecture. It's not coming out of the blue, you know, totally. This is how he works. Without that, uh, as Jean Nouvel called it, l'intuition crayonante, you know, the, the, the intuitions that manifest themselves through the pencil, through the hand drawing. No, it, it is a different kind of work. So computational architecture, growth titanium table, this is something else, it's not by him and I'm not sure why I put it here. Maybe just to show the, you know, the web-like kind of structure where the ornament becomes structure and the structure becomes ornament. I mean, can you believe it in modern times, something like this? This is almost uh, anti-modern, but it's not. It's, it's, it's actually, uh, you know, cutting edge in a way. It's in the front line of, uh, of today. So you see here two roads, the, the asphalted straight road and then the, the troublesome, uh, the troubled, uh, you know, uh, unasphalted, uh, you know, earth with, with, with uh, water and dirt. And he said, if we had no bias, if we had no preconceptions, what kind of forms could we design? I personally think, and I'm sure he thinks the same way, the difficult road is the, the one that leads one to creativity, not the straight asphalted road that other people traced and other people asphalted. No, this one, this one that is difficult, where you start as a pioneer uh, uh, on your own and you have to create a path. Uh, he arrived at Centre Pompidou as well uh, and uh, involves creating an algorithm to design the structure of the Dori column in the case of this biennial in, uh, in, uh, in, in China. The Chinese are very, uh, you know, we might say whatever we want to say, but uh, it, it's the biggest lab now in the world, in China. They experiment much more than the United States or, Eur or Europe together. So, um, anyway, um, you see between ornament and structure, between order and chaos, foreign and yet familiar, a digital grotesque. Uh, Eisenman would call it gr grotesque, not grotesque, grotesque. This kind of uh, luxurious and complicated and interwoven, uh, uh, you know, uh, architectural entities uh, are, are rather connected with Asia, not with Europe. Although, in this case, is a European who, who is promoting them. Machines, machines, but you see the machines are humanized because they are serving a purpose that is beyond the machine-like aesthetics. But the human hand is still present. 